Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time. If you are new, we are back to watch another episode of The Boys. This is season four, episode four. It is called Wisdom of the Ages. Uh, I believe this one is going to be uh, focusing a lot on Homelander's backstory, like him growing up in that lab, and I'm very excited to see uh, how that plays out. So, before we jump into this, if you end up enjoying my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. If you're new here, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon or joining YouTube memberships. That is linked in the description down below. Uh, that would mean the world. But other than that, let's jump into season four, episode four of The Boys. Dang, they had like a whole bunch of different designs. The security cameras upstairs just went black. Hey, Phil, you copy? Phil, anyone up there? I think they're dead. Call Vought. Tell them we have a breach. The line's dead. Is this current day? That stuff looks current day. Homelander's gonna kill you guys. <laughs> He brought a cake. Hello, everyone. Hi. John, Homelander. Just Homelander. Hey, Marty. Good to see you. You too. Uh, Homelander. <laughs> so many memories. Oh, I, so many I, uh, not good memories. I brought up Fudgy the Whale. Do me a favor, could you get a plate, some forks? Thank you so much. I would leave. I would get in the elevator, I would never come back here. Where's Barbara? Last I checked, she's still director? She's off site today. I could bring her in, would you? I'd love to catch up. Tell, tell her it's a little reunion. Terrific. All right, everyone, dig in. Please, come on in. There you go. <laughs> I was expecting him to laser all those people. That's like a giant worm inside him. What are you doing? Come on, get up. But sure, the world doesn't end just because your shitty life does. He is really going through it. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm sorry, your father's condition meets the criteria for brain death. Huey, it's what he wanted. <sighs> How get, long? Get some, some V. Um, A couple of days at most. Don't. I'm sorry. No. He's gonna get a hold of some temp V or some full fledged V and juice his dad up to save his life. I'm calling it now. Yep. 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 Huey. He knows exactly what he's about to do. My dad used to play this all the time in the car, and I'd fall asleep to it in the back seat. You never told me about them. Your family. So, not exactly my favorite story to tell. Yeah, because they got murdered. And there was this Russian mafia thing in Brighton Beach. Their yep. boss was this woman. Yep, 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 yep. And she made Frenchie kill them. Some guy broke in and they found my parents first. Look at my little sister. You were there. The gunshots woke me up. I heard a 
I went down the hallway, so I just hid under my bed. Frenchie must have been pretty young at the time. These scars, all these burns, maybe. Uh, a lot of nightmares about those. Yeah. Probably shouldn't uh, let him see your legs ever again. Long socks now. <laughs> Just long socks exclusively. Never take your socks off, honestly. What are they doing? Oh, they're setting up a thing right outside your spot. Hey, can we talk? No. No, you don't you don't hey. speak. So I was thinking over lunch we could order some of those fried pickles from Flavor Town. Or just skip straight to the Flounder Pounder special. I find you repulsive in a way that's difficult to quantify and I'm fucking amazing at quantifying. So. Okay. <laughs> so publicly she doesn't want to know, want, doesn't want people to know what she's doing with him. You know, when I first met you, I thought you were kind of uppity, but you're one of the good ones. Well. We are the new kids in the seven. Mm -hmm. That was not so thinly veiled racism. <laughs> now I know a lot of you probably know me from a podcast. But VNN gave me the next six hours to bring six you hours? the truth about Starlight. Can someone please explain to me what makes you firecrackers maybe? I have no idea bollocks I don't quit lying Annie and Kanye West. of course they brought Kanye how about a game of waste paper basketball I'm sorry you win I'll let you knock off early and go see the fam um, okay excellent I'll start Hey, pretty easy shots though. You're like six inches away. Yeah, you you were sitting there, and uh, well, I was in this oven here. Ooh, and uh, big you, eggs. You made the shot. You did a little fist pump to celebrate, and, and then you turned up the temperature to see if you could burn my skin. You remember that, right? Your turn. <sighs> it's a big yikes. You're gonna die, brother. He's gonna. Fun fact. Put you in the oven. Even though my skin didn't char, still really hurt. <laughs> I mean, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was in there screaming in agony, and my tears just sizzled away. Oh, that's horrifying. You know, I had nightmares about that exact moment, and you can't even remember it. Funny, isn't it, how people can have such a, a different memory of the exact same thing. That's, yeah, brother, everyone here is going to die. I'm going to throw that through your skull. Hey, Frank, this is my last shot. Why don't you go and watch from in there? John, why don't we... Homelander. Uh... Get in the oven, Frank. Uh... Frank, he's gonna set you on fire, brother. Get in the oven or your family goes in with you. Please, Homelander, you don't have to Marty. do this. Uh, I mean, what goes around comes around. Thank you. You guys are reaping what you sowed with this child. I'm so, so sorry. You're sorry? Now? Doesn't do him any, any good now. That is 
is, uh, that is dark. That's dark, but Loki deserved it. Hey, what's up, A-Train? What the shit is this? Where's the talking gold tea with the gold chains? It's okay. I'm the one that called you. I need a dose of Compound V, and I need it today. Oh, is that all? It's too dangerous. No, hey, fuck that! You owe me! I owe you? I just saved your fucking life. Every single fucked up, horrible thing that's ever happened to me, to all of us, it all started with you. Because you took away someone I loved. That's now you're true. Gonna give someone I love back. That's true. His dad's dying. He needs it. My dad's about to die. This is your chance. Who is pointing that gun? If I do this, we're good. Forever? Yes. Deal. Ow! What? Kimiko, I'm sorry, but it's my dad. What else was I supposed to do? Uh, I think you're supposed to let him die. Damn, Kimiko. Who is shooting at you? Who the fuck are those guys? <gasps> oh, those people are part of the shining light what's its face army. Why are they after us? They're after her. Oh, <laughs> I kind of murdered a bunch of them. <laughs> oh my god. You just shattered that guy's nose. Liquid nitrogen? Heroin enemas don't come cheap, my son. Mm -hmm. I'll never unsee that nasty shit. Well, I fucking warned you, didn't I? Anyway, don't matter. We've got what we needed, job done. Someone got a heroin enema? Emma got a favor to ask. Think you're in the position to ask for a favor? If I can't get the job done before I, uh... Kick the bucket. I need you to get Ryan away from Homelander. Oh, butcher. Date, that's a valid request. <laughs> Raise him. Raise him. To the best dad I know him. Damn. That might be one of the nicest things you've ever said to me, but what if Ryan doesn't want to go? He does. Then you've got to make him. And don't let him become a child soldier. What's up, not show, love? Just weren't sure whether you wanted us to kneel before you cross or burn it. Nice. You're those motherfuckers that killed my friend. Yeah, crying shame now. <laughs> it's like, that might have been us. Talk American. Talk American. You remember Jesus. that magical summer when you was 28, working as a counselor at the Capes for Christ Bible Camp in Davie, Florida? And you met that lovely 15-year-old boy who tickled your fancy and oh, then tickled more than that, didn't he? Oh, snap. You and your little Bieber edging in the back of your Rab 4 in the car park of Booker the Bet Park. She's a pedophile. You're gonna tell us everything you know about Sage and her She's grand plan. She's a goddamn PDF file. I have I just seen it myself. Fuck around and find out. Starlight. That's not. Well then, okay. I had inappropriate relations with a sweet young man. Oh, damn that smile. But that young man, he was 15 years old. But Just straight up admits it. That's crazy. <laughs> and my sins were washed away by the tears of his love. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! That's wild Lord, that they can spin that. that. Young man in my life. 
Well, gunmen came into Walmart and took hostages. Well, Starlight, she came in a blasted. I started blasting. <laughs> she blinded one of those hostages that day. A mother of three. Just trying to buy crunch berries for her kids. How are you... How are you possibly going to blame this on her? Starlight's no hero. At least she ain't a PDF file. She never was. Why are they looking at her like, did you do that? <laughs> Who cares? I was still learning how to She's control 13. my powers. I... Bro. How did any of them look at her like that? That seems like a solid spot to hide stuff. Homelander wouldn't actually read books. <laughs> Damn, just a whole bunch of milk. There it is. I'd take a couple vials. A train. Ashley. What the fuck are you doing here? What are you doing here? Be, huh? You want some too? What the hell are you doing in here? Nothing. She also came to take V. <laughs> <laughs> you left a floater in his toilet? That was there when I got here. Looks like we both have a problem. Looks like we do. Looks like you don't have a problem because neither are you going to say nothing. You were always one of the kinder ones. Yeah, you're next, That's though. Right, John. Get in the oven. Homelander, we were friends. I was always nice to you. Yeah, that's right. You were. But you still Mostly. let it happen. Well, you remember the nickname you had for me, right? <laughs> really? Squirt. I used to be left in there for hours, days on end, completely alone. Right? Oh. Only. I was never really alone, was I? And you probably went to the bathroom in there, too. Growing boys have certain needs, shall oh, we say. Oh, you are so whacking it in there? I figured out that when you did your rounds at night, I had about a couple of minutes to myself to... Uh, and that would be the only time of day that I would feel anything good. So this one night, uh, I couldn't get finished in time. This uh, explains so much. And that's when you nicknamed me Squirt. I gotta be honest with you, Marty. You really hurt my feelings. Brother. I do want you to jerk off in front of us right now. No. Hey, uh, guys, come on over here. Come on. That is awful. Well, I mean, as long as he doesn't kill you, I don't think this is the worst thing. <laughs> the worst punishment you could get <laughs> for doing what you did to him. <laughs> Marty, it looks like you're shucking a little mushroom. Oh, that poor little thing. Cheer for him. Come on. Uh, this is, uh... You get hard right now, or I'm gonna lazy your dick off. <laughs> yeah. Something to play for now. Hmm? Use it or lose it, Marty. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> this Come on, is... Squirt. Oh. <laughs> yes! More spit, Marty. More spit. That'll work. I don't even know what to say. This is horrible. I can't. Come on, Marty. Come Marty, on. you're losing your you're losing it, sorry. It's coming off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Damn, that's so much blood. Oh, 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 you're getting dick blood off my boots, Marty! Stop it, John. 
Barbara. The cake's melted, I'm afraid. <laughs> Please put him out of his misery. Damn. I'm surprised the the lasers didn't cauterize his wound. Can we talk in private? Damn, she has the motherly disappointment tone. Kimiko! Damn, Kimiko popping off a grenade launcher. I mean, that's one way to disable her. Yeah, brother, you gotta actually do some work here if you wanna live. He got a cut in. his first like like up close kill I mean he blew up translucent back in the day but yeah. Oh. Oh. You brought her into this life. Damn, Kimiko wasn't just a victim of this situation. She helped. And the truth. Well, it is so much worse than you could ever imagine. Oh, no. What is it? What, is it? what, is it? what happened? Starlight visited a clinic. She wasn't going for a checkup. What the fuck? And she had an abortion. Oh. Are those my fucking medical records? She knew the difference between right and wrong. <sighs> With that baby killer? <sighs> Poor Annie. What do you think you're doing? I was just looking for our souvenir. She could have given it up for adoption, but no, she murdered it. So you finally came to the. Oh, damn, Annie. Kick the shit out of her. Boy. The perfect weapon to use the liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Annie, are you gonna kill her on live TV? How's that for uppity, cracker? Damn right. Stop. Look. <laughs> Cameraman's just doing his job. <sighs> she deserved that, though. Get up. How? Billy, come on, get up. What is he supposed to do? Worm, attack. You don't get to quit. How, what if the worm attacks? Did the worm kill him? 
This is a Moon Knight situation and you're not even going to show us what happened? <laughs> even he's like, what the F? Yo, he destroyed that man. Fucking hell. What the fuck happened? Come on, let's get the fuck out of there. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> That's insane. This episode's crazy. Not one of them had the backbone to stand up and say this is wrong. Because they were scared. They didn't have a choice. They were scared. You couldn't stand the idea that we would be disappointed in you. Your need for approval and for love. But brought in the best psychologists in the world. To gaslight you. Develop the protocol to carefully engineer that need so that you would be obedient. Damn, they Many turned you into this on purpose. Success. It's so human. We'll never be able to overcome that. Yikes, bro. Are you wrong? Corrine, please. All right, I gotta get you up. Corrine, boom, please stop. Stop what? being so fucking nice to me. You gotta tell him, buddy. It was me. What, what was you? Yeah. He killed your family, brother. close if you come to me again I'll fucking kill you <sighs> yep you're gonna want to find a new job Colin Ugh. I want you to put this inside me it's the worst dildo I've ever seen but no in my eye here why? You give me a frontal lobotomy, and I don't have to fucking be me for a couple hours. Huh? That's just fucking gross. I'll let you ask it is. while we watch the Kim and Ray J video. Okay, so where do you want me to put it? Just right there? <gasps> Sit down. <laughs> That's... <laughs> He's like, yep, no, deal. with the eye itself. I don't want to go blind. Oh, I don't want to see this. 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 Now, use the hammer. The hammer. Aaron from Blind Wave is going to lose his oh. mind. Again. Okay. Oh. Hammer down. Scrape. Scrape, Scrape my fucking brains out. Oh. Oh, it's weird. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, are you okay? So, hey. I have another flavor town for you. It's called her butthole. My pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's the weirdest thing ever. Oh, Jesus, what happened to your leg? It's okay, I'm fine. But look, I saw the firecracker thing, that fucking asshole. No, no, I shouldn't have lost it. How could you not lose it? That was like the most private thing between I you like, and me, and to fucking broadcast it like that. I like that he's not mad at her about that. I agonized over that decision. Agonized. And now when people look at me, whether they're supportive or judging or, or angry, I have to relive it 
over and over and over again, and my mom... <sighs> Have you talked to her? Yo, that's tough. Calls. That is tough. That is so tough. It is nobody's business but yours. God, people suck. <laughs> This bullshit, right? You're not gonna forgive me. You're right, I, I was gonna tell you to go fuck yourself, but I changed my mind. Why? Interesting, I wonder why he made that decision. Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Long enough. Interesting, interesting. I was gonna give it to my dad. Oh, you. Look, I know. I know it's insane <sighs> and terrible, but what other choice do I have? Any other fucking choice, you twat. You're really telling me that you wouldn't take some if you were in his shoes? Because you kinda are. Yeah, he is in his shoes. I already took some. Nick did out a Frenchie's disc four months ago. Thought it might kill me. Interesting, and it didn't. Maybe it did cure you, and that's the worm thing. All it did was bring up the big day. I'm telling you, quit while you're behind. I think it did give him powers, and the, it's the freaking worm. It gave the worm superpowers. The little worm that was in his brain. It juiced that bad boy up. <laughs> the worm. <laughs> Anytime he thinks it's Becca talking to him, it's the worm. Interesting. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey. He's pulling a, a, a Peter Parker. You okay? Yeah. He tripped. Could have saved him. I just need some air. I bet she's gonna give it to him. While he's out of the room, she she is gonna put it in. This is her way of um, making it up to her son. choice to make. He must have killed everyone in there. Wow. He killed everyone in there and then just made her stay there. Holy crap, dude. Yo, this episode was a lot. Um, like I thought, I thought the, like the bulk of it was gonna be focusing on Homelander and his past and I thought we were really gonna dive deep in like flashbacks and, and all these things and really like hone in on like what made Homelander Homelander and like make me feel bad for him and it kind of did a little bit but then like so much of this episode surprisingly followed the current day storylines and a lot of it was kind of heavy. Let's talk about Homelander. Um, his, that whole sequence with him was like 
not it was a, kind of anxiety inducing a little bit um because you know like you know what's gonna happen <laughs> as soon as he goes down there and there are people there still that were there when he was a kid you're like okay these specific people are gonna die like you don't know necessarily if everybody down there is gonna die but definitely these couple people and like him just kind of taking revenge on them it's simultaneously like horrible because it's a villain doing villainous things but it's also like you're like you don't feel bad about it <laughs> like I didn't feel bad watching these people die because like they willingly I mean yeah they were scared <laughs> for their lives I guess technically but they willingly and kind of like they willingly perpetuated this like cycle of violence right they they did these experiments on him and they didn't just like do it and not like it like they weren't pouty about it the whole time they didn't like begrudgingly do these things like they were actively enjoying the torture that they put him through and they thought it was funny like the the guy with the paper basketball like he he was having a good time setting Homelander on fire. Um, and so, like, watching him burn to death, like, that, it's awful. But, like, at the same time, you can't help but think, like, you guys kind of deserve this a little bit. <laughs> like, you, you did horrible things to this child. Not only did you, like, do horrible things, but you intentionally created the monster that he became. Like, you you psycho psycho anically psycho that was the word like you purposefully engineered who he would become like with with <laughs> therapists and doctors and like you starved him for love so that he would obey you but you just like didn't count the fact that like that eventually he would grow old enough to like not follow the rules anymore like uh, it's just it's crazy that they thought they could control this guy for so long but they got what's what it came to them and you know like moments of the situation were just like crazy and just like i like almost in shock watching it like i don't know if i had an emotion to feel <laughs> during that like when you like the moment some of the stuff is just so outlandish that you're like I don't even know how to process what's happening <laughs> like he forces this dude to literally just whack it in front of everyone and then lasers his like just a hole through his dick and it's like like I don't even know man like just horrible and then the lady that like was in charge of it she she gets down there and immediately has this, like, disapproving, like, motherly tone to him. And it, it it works, clearly. And I think he's still subconsciously, like, afraid to do anything f directly physical to her. And so he does, like, the next best thing. And he murders every single person down there. And lays their bodies about that room and then I assume he just locked her in that room so she's gonna like go crazy and die just looking at all these dead bodies and it's just like oh my god like that's horrible like that's crazy stuff <laughs> I don't even like know I don't even know how to like process that part of it um and that, that and then we're talking about the rest of everything that happened like, Jesus um Okay, and then what What else? Who else had big storylines? Frenchie. Um, his whole thing with Colin, where Colin describes the man that killed his parents. As soon as you were like, as soon as he was like, um, he had very distinct, like, scars on his legs. I was like, oh, he's going to see those scars and know that it was Frenchie. And then, uh, and then Frenchie tells him, he shows him the scars, and he beats him within an, in, in, within an inch of his life and almost kills him. And, like, that, that part was heavy. I mean, like, you... <laughs> it makes sense that Colin would, even, would be mad. Like, how do you murder a dude's family and then, like, 
sleep with him for months. That's diabolical. That's some that's some villain behavior, Frenchie. Like, how did you fall into this trap of of starting a relationship with this dude? Like, as soon as you were aware that you murdered his family, how did you allow this to continue? It's just crazy stuff. It's, a, it's just, it's a lot. Um, who else? Let's talk about, let's talk about Butcher. Um, Butcher, he has a worm in his brain. And I think, okay, so, yeah, so he, he's f freaking fighting, um, what's his face? The, the homosexual pastor, stretchy McStretch guy. Uh, he's fighting him and he's about to die. Like he's about to get killed. And then this worm, this worm that's like in his head is like freaking out. And I'm pretty sure the reason why it's freaking out is because like it's a sentient being now, right? Because Butcher tells Huey in the alley that he got some V to try and like fix his problem, right? He thought he was going to die. So he, he got some V, juiced himself up, uh, and it didn't work. He, at least he thinks it didn't work. I'm pretty sure it did work. <laughs> Except it, it literally gave his tumor or a worm in his head superpowers. And then that thing, when it thought that Butcher's life was being threatened, just killed everything. Um, and so presumably, it's entirely possible that Butcher is fine. Like he might be fine and, and, and be healthy, but this worm in his head is like causing these symptoms, right? Like, I mean, I, this thing's pressing against his brain, like activating different signals and making him pass out at different moments. The hallucination of Becca is probably purely because of this thing in his head. Uh, and I'm freaking curious to see like what's gonna happen with that like presumably we're gonna have to get this worm out of him and potentially save his life because of it um that's all just a lot to a lot to think about um the also the storyline with um huey and kimiko and huey's dad that was kind of crazy right so his dad's obviously dying and they're gonna pull the plug and so huey is like i'm gonna get some v and i i theorized a couple episodes ago i was like that's how they're going to save him. He's going to get some V, give it to his dad. And so they meet A-Train and convince him to go get the V. But then Kimiko, her like shining light people attack. And that whole sequence was very interesting just because, you know, Huey, it's like, it's curious because Huey went through all that to get the V. Like he killed a guy with a box cutter, like to get that V. And then in the end, didn't end up giving it to his dad. Um, but we learned some important info about Kimiko, about like, you know, she, up to this point, like we've assumed, like we knew she was part of the shining light and like she did bad things. Right. But we just kind of assumed like, Hey, she was a child soldier. Like she was forced to do these things. They kept her in captivity, but we don't really realize that she also like brought people in as, at, at least that's how I was how I was reading that scene. Like, the girl that she's fighting right now with the scars, like, Kimiko brought her in and put her in the trunk and then inducted her into this group and gave her the scars. Like, Kimiko was not just... I mean, she she was very much a victim, but, like, she played additional parts to that. Like, she wasn't a complete victim. Like, she also hurt other people. And I think that is the the part of her past that she's really gonna have to reckon with um, if she wants to like move on and find her voice again. Is she's gonna have to like find a way to maybe forgive herself for the role that she played. Uh, and I'm I'm curious to see how that's gonna go. But then uh, I feel like the main like meat and potatoes of this episode revolved around Annie and. Uh, the president and uh, firecracker, just that whole situation is just, actually, no, first, before, before before we jump into that, let's talk about freaking Sage and Deep. They have such a weird, <laughs> such a weird thing going on. And um, it's so interesting that her brain like regenerates, like you can kill other parts of her. And if you, if you like, 
attack her other ways. Like if you shoot her in the chest, she'll die. But if you like shot her in the face, like her brain will just regenerate that. That's crazy. And she like turns off her brain. You know how like some people just like chill out and watch like a superhero. Like some people will chill out and watch Transformers. I think she talked about watching Transformers earlier, but that's like, that's like a turn off your brain movie. That's so funny that so many people consider like Transformers or like Fast and the Furious like turn off your brain movies. And last episode, when she was boning the deep the first time, she, I think she asked him if he wanted to watch Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it showed the like bloody thing on the on the table and I was like what is that? I didn't know what that was and then we find out this episode that it's like a little it's like a tool so she can like self lobotomize. And that's insane. That's horrible. Like that's some messed up stuff. <laughs> but it turns off her brain and then gets her horny and it's like what is freaking going like the, their relationship is so weird and it's it's wild like it's just horrible stuff um so we just need to need to get that out of the way but yes back to annie and her storyline and her and and firecracker so ugh, like it's just so yeah that's just so heavy like it's so heavy so obviously her and Firecracker have this like feud, right? This this decades long feud starting with, you know, the way Annie treated her when they were young. Yeah. Like she ruined this person's life essentially and started a vendetta that <sighs> led to some heavy revelations um for sure. We had I mean, Firecracker's messed up, bro. <laughs> like, she is a horrible person. Like, not even the fact that, like, what she did to Annie, but she's a, she's a straight-up PDF file. <laughs> like, she she hooked up with a 15-year-old when she was 28. That's insane. Like, and she was just, like... Like, the fact that Butcher was, like, like tell us what you know or, or we're going to post it. And she's like, I'll post it myself. And like posted it and then used that to like, to like strengthen her platform. Like it's insane. Like, like that's what, it's so wild. Like it's crazy to like watch people weaponize faith. Like as a religious person myself, like, I like I'm a Christian and I'm I'm no I don't know how do I say this like that's it's 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 weird because like sharing your testimony is like such a big thing in like Christianity and the like faith environment right like that's like that's such a big aspect of it like showing and talking about like where you were in your life before you like became a person of faith, like before you started a relationship with Jesus, like talking about like, hey, I was in a messed up spot in my life. Like I did bad things. Like I, you know, had this, this and this going on. And now, you know, like I've been given new life for a second chance or all these things. Um, like, that's such a huge part about, like, testimony is, like, showing where I was, you know, how I encountered God and now where he's brought me. And, like, I'm myself, <laughs> have given my testimony hundreds of times in various situations. Um, and I make no secret about the fact that, like, I think I was a sh shitty person <laughs> back in the day. Like, before I truly like accepted my faith and, and, and my relationship with, with Jesus. Like I, I think I was a horrible person. I was a douchebag. Like I, I was not a good person at all. And so I think faith is a really good thing and it definitely made me a better person. And so it's just so, it's so interesting and crazy. Like not just this show, but like 
even like the political sphere of the last like eight to ten years of just seeing like politicians and like online like grifters like take faith like like genuine faith that people have and like weaponize it for their own political and personal gain um i mean you can you can list off a thousand different people that have done it but i mean obviously the big one is uh would be um the the man formerly known as the president and uh, by the name of uh, donald j trump uh, a man who uh went up on stage and said his favorite book of the Bible is to Peter. <laughs> like, just, like, a man who's arguably never opened his Bible ever in his life. And, like, all his followers just, like, willingly weaponizing an in, like, a falsely genuine faith. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, and it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating watching that happen as, like, a believer to watch not just like the them weaponize it but to to watch like people that you used to respect <laughs> like people that you generally thought were like good like christian people like people that you were like you looked up to and respected as like leaders of of faith movements and people who you were friends with and and you see them just like fall in line with this like false prophet <laughs> and it's just it's so like it's so infuriating to see it happen when you can see the grift happen in real time and then you see people that you enjoyed and and respected like follow that willingly it's like it's insane and it is like antithetical to christian belief and it's just it's infuriating so then like it's equally crazy watching freaking firecracker <laughs> openly admit like not just a regular sin not just like hey i'm i was a pathological liar or like hey i was a little bit like i was a misogynist or like i only cared about hooking up with people or like i did drugs or something but she's actively like i was a pdf file <laughs> Like, she's straight up admitting to diddling little boys. Like, and then just weaponizes it to be like, yeah, I did that horrible thing, but I found Jesus. And now, like, look who didn't follow Jesus. And it's like, bro, like, first of all, you don't, you're not even telling the truth. <laughs> like, you didn't find Jesus. You're a liar. And you're only bringing it up this way to, like, save yourself first of all and then weaponize it against someone else because you know that the people that are your fans are gonna f freaking fall in line and believe you no matter what it's just it's so frustrating and then like to then go one step further and being like she's like you know how you know who who did something even worse like it's just like it's infuriating <laughs> like it's so it makes me so mad um because she's like <laughs> she's straight up is like i touched little kids but you know who did something worse and it's, and then she brings up the fact that annie had an abortion and it's it's like even the fact that she like outed that like she outed her on that like she found her private medical records and like shared that with the nation like a deeply personal thing um is is so tough because like Aunt, annie talks about how she like agonized over that decision and like <laughs> this is such like a polit like political thing in in the, the world today of like republican politicians trying to ban abortions and take away you know basic you know health rights for like individuals and being like yeah like it's christian values no it's not like it is not and they try and pretend like like women are just like willy-nilly 
going to have abortions all the time and are just like totally fine with it and it's like a chill thing when in reality these women are agonizing over this decision like they hate the fact that they make have to make this decision and many of them hate themselves for it afterwards and live with such pain and regret and 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 just shame over the 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 thing that they had to do in some cases and the fact that there are people out there that like straight up just like try and villainize them for it and like make them seem like they're just like they're like oh you're a baby killer it's like <laughs> this is a, a a decision that these people don't come to lightly like this is not a thing they wanted to do <laughs> like no one no one wakes up in the morning and is like i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get pregnant and then go abort it it's like no this is this is the last place a woman ever wants to be is that situation and the fact that like it just gets so easily like villainized it's just, it's so frustrating <laughs> It, it legitimately makes me so mad and ashamed to be, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it makes me mad to be even remotely associated, like, tangentially associated with the people that do that. Like, it, like, 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 if you guys think, like, for, for those who are, like, non-religious people out there, who, like, don't consider themselves Christians, right? T like, if you take how frustrated and angry you are <laughs> at these people doing these things, you can't imagine how annoying it is and how frustrating, frustratingly agonizing it is as someone who, like, is a member of that faith community to see your faith weaponized in that way and, and to demonize people making... A decision on the most traumatic day of their lives and it's it's ugh, it's so frustrating and like my heart aches for this fictional character <laughs> it's just oh man it's like an episode or two ago i was i was straight up just like yeah annie annie's getting what she deserves like she ruined this girl's life like whatever this girl does like she, Annie kind of deserves it a little bit, but then now I'm just like, oh my god, like, no one ever deserves what Annie is going through. It, it's it's horrible. And then the so the freaking president that she's talking to is has no remorse for her. He's just like, I can't associate with you anymore. Like, if you hadn't effed this up, like, it would have worked perfectly. It's just like, brother, like, you can't even, you can't even give her the tiniest bit of remorse or and I'm sorry like just uh, it's a lot it's a lot it was a heavy like I was not expecting this episode to be this heavy but it was <laughs> and uh, I don't know I don't know I don't even know what to say at this point like every so often the boys will get like deep and maybe it's just because I'm like I don't know if I'm just, like, tired or, like, emotionally available right now or something. I don't know. I just was not expecting to feel emotions like this today. And it's a lot. And I don't even know if, like, half the things I said are, like, coherent. Or, like, if they make sense to anybody. But it's just things I needed to talk about. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought of the episode down in the comments below. I'm very curious to see how you feel. Um, if you enjoyed my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. And then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction, consider supporting me on Patreon or joining YouTube memberships. You just sync up your own copy of the show and you can watch along with me. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.